Well, happy Wednesday morning, everyone, and welcome back to Morning Musings. My name is Don K. Preston. I am the president of Preterist Research Institute of Ardmore, Oklahoma. And I appreciate you being with me. By the way, thanks again for all of those of you who have ordered uh, Sam Dawson's new book, Revelation Revealed. And uh, also some of you have ordered, but I want to emphasize how really, really good Tony Denton's brand new book is, Pertinent Parousia Passages. Tony marches through, since we're in 1 Corinthians 15, it's particularly relevant Tony goes through and gives us a commentary on 1 Corinthians 15. By the way, he takes note of the present passive indicatives. And one of the things that Tony does that I particularly appreciate is he has an examination of 2 Corinthians 5. He has a study of 1 Thessalonians chapter 4. Needless to say, these are some of the key eschatological texts when it comes to understanding the resurrection. And Tony, for instance... uh, This is an excellent, excellent observation. In his commentary on 2 Corinthians chapter 5, he points out that when Paul says that if the earthly house of this tabernacle be destroyed, and Tony, in in a very excellent discussion of the Greek there, kataluthe, he points out that that word is never used of the death of the human body. But it is used in reference to the temple. Not the human body, but the temple, the old covenant temple. And so this is, this is a very fascinating, very insightful observation. And if you would like to get a copy of Tony Denton's new book, Pertinent Parousia Passages, which is particularly, excuse the pun, pertinent for our study of 1 Corinthians chapter 15, go to my website, BibleProphecy.com or even DonKPreston.com, send me an email and I will give you the instructions on how to get a copy of this excellent new book. Well, I've been pointing out to you that Paul, in his uh, dialogue, in his debate with the scoffers at 1 Corinthians 15, who denied the resurrection of the dead ones, Paul used the present passive indicative to say, Over and over again, ten times, Paul used the present passive indicative to say that the dead ones were being raised at the time he wrote. Now look, let me reiterate a point that I made in yesterday's video. If Paul has in mind the general resurrection of all of the dead who have ever lived in the history of mankind, and he says the dead are being raised, that demands that the dead all around the world, it demands that at Corinth and at at Jerusalem and Athens and wherever were actively being raised from the dead. Now let me ask you a question. If Paul's talking about physical death, physical resurrection, and He says the dead are being raised. How could the scoffers deny that? Why didn't Paul say, look, you you scoffers, you're denying the resurrection of the dead ones, but they're being raised. Are you not aware? Have you not walked out to the cemeteries and seen people coming out of the physical graves? Folks, the use of the present passive indicative here is extremely, extremely powerful. Another point, I touched on this ever so briefly yesterday, and that is that when we look at Paul's use of the Greek tenses, it's not arbitrary, it's not sloppy, it's not capricious, and it's not, quote, incidental. And what's fascinating to me is that even the enemies of covenant eschatology, in their arguments on 1 Corinthians chapter 15, They go to the Greek tenses, boy, and they say, we have to honor the Greek tenses. Now, let me give you a good example of that. Again, that I mentioned briefly yesterday, that I want really, I just want to drive this home. Notice that Paul says, 1 Corinthians 15, 27, he has put, 
Now that's in the aorist or the past tense. All things under his feet. Well, had Christ put all things under his feet or not? Look, you go to the commentaries and the commentaries say, well, what we have here is an already but not yet. Aha! Thank you very much. I agree with that. Watch this. Verse 25. While in the next verse he will say, He has put all things under his feet, aorist tense. Now he says, He must reign, which is in, in the present infinitive, meaning he must continue to reign until he has put all enemies under his feet. Well, Paul, uh, you're going to say in verse 27, he, he has put all things under his feet. No, it's an already but not yet. It is a process that had begun, a process that was present, i.e., he was in the process as he was ruling, as he was reigning, he was in the process of putting down his enemies. And it was a future. Now, if we are going to admit and emphasize he has put all enemies under his feet, honoring the Greek tense. And if we are going to say and admit and emphasize that when Paul says he must reign, he, and I know Kenneth Gentry does this, Gary DeMar does this, other scholars do this, they point to the present infinitive. He must continue to reign. Okay, if we're going to emphasize the present infinitive of what Christ was doing at that very time, i.e. reigning at the right hand of the throne on high, then how in the name of reason, how in the name of logic, do we also say, oh, well, he must reign until he has put all the enemies under his feet. See, okay, that's future. And then turn right around and say, well, yeah, I, I know that Paul used the present passive indicative to speak of what was happening right then, which it, the right then was when Christ was sitting on the throne, ruling and reigning over his enemies, putting his enemies under his feet. And we deny, I should say the scoffers deny, the present passive indicative. Folks, if the, if the aorist is valid and to be honored, if the present is valid and to be honored, if the future is valid and to be honored, then the present passive indicative is valid and must be honored. If not, why not? It is surely a strained hermeneutic that says... Well, you know, the Corinthians were being, present passive indicative, saved. 1 Corinthians 15, verse 2. And Christ had put all things under his feet, and we got to honor that. And he would continue to reign, present infinitive, and we have to honor that. Until he has put, future tense, all things under his feet, and we must honor that. Oh, but even though he uses the present passive indicative ten times, and he uses the present indicative once at least. We don't have to pay attention to the tenfold use of the present passive indicative. Now, in tomorrow, in tomorrow's video, I'm going to share with you that guess what? 1 Corinthians 15 has a direct parallel from a major resurrection text found in the Gospels that no one denies the already, the ongoing, and the not yet. We'll see you on the flip side. Don't forget to order these books. These are great, great books, and you need them. So we'll see you on the flip side.